Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this series of videos, I'm kind of taking apart single ingredients, putting them, applying them to my hair, seeing exactly what they are, how they work, and what they do. So when we look at our products, we'll have a much clearer picture on what we can expect from those products, and also have the option of just using them by themselves or making something in our own kitchen. Last week we discussed aloe vera, which is a humectant. This week is another humectant, which is marshmallow root. At the end of this video, you will see a demo on how I use this and apply it to my hair. I didn't want to get off the subject of humectants quite yet. I originally planned on only using one a week, but in researching with the aloe vera and the humectants, I found a good little list of other ingredients I see fairly often in curly hair and hair products in general that I want to kind of dissect and take apart and single out to see what they did because some of them seemed like they're all under humectants but even from today I can tell there's a big difference from an aloe vera humectant and the marshmallow root humectant. There's about three or about three more coming up that I want to also spotlight. So marshmallow root is a film forming humectant and with the film forming humectant even though I've seen articles where it kind of lists aloe vera as a film forming humectant I definitely didn't get that feeling with aloe vera my hair was kind of frizzy it didn't have any hold it definitely gave more volume and kind of really put the moisture to my hair um, but it kind of as the day went on the second day my hair kind of fell flatter but it was a nice refreshing spray for my second day curls to add to that with marshmallow root and I did it this morning, the demo for this morning, and you can see my hair is a flatter but more defined. I don't have hardly as much frizz um, at all. And it actually kind of, it feels smoother and silkier. It, it even feels more shiny. So even though they're both humectants, I definitely get a different feel in my hair. Both of them, neither one, I don't feel a residue. I don't feel a film, even though it's a film forming humectant. Um, marshmallow root, when you compare it to like a flaxseed gel or even slippery elm, is more on the water side consistency than more of a gel, like slippy, gummy type of consistency that those ones are. We'll be looking into those ones in the future though, for sure. It was very easy to find. I found this at my local health food store. Probably this whole bag uh, was a couple, two or three dollars and it's or also organic and I think for the recipe I only used four tablespoons so I have a good amount of it left so it's very common in a lot of our products and it's kind of nice to know that people use it in, as for detangling as it does offer a little bit of slip but I get the feeling it doesn't offer nearly as much slip as slippery elm or um, flaxseed stay tuned for the demo be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our other spotlight of our single ingredients so for this recipe, I boiled two cups of water on the stove and once it's brought to a boil, I added four tablespoons of the dry marshmallow root. I continued to stir this. I was really expecting for the texture to kind of get thicker and so I let this boil about 15-20 minutes and I really wasn't noticing that it was getting any thicker but I was losing more water. So. I kept stirring and stirring and so I was losing some of the water. I wasn't noticing too big of a difference in the texture of what was uh, not the actual root. So then I decided to take it off the stove as I didn't think I was, my, the texture was going to change much. I just got a regular strainer and I just strained out the root and separated it from the water. I did have like a cheesecloth and other things because I thought it would be similar to flaxseed and it definitely was not. It was is much more actually completely watery, just leaves a little bit of a, um, a slippery, slick consistency when you touch it. I think from the two cups after the 20 minutes, I got about a, a quarter to a half cup. Because this was so watery, um, I tried to like slip it through my to my hair, but I really wasn't sure that I was getting it evenly distributed so I took about a half cup of water and I just diluted the rest of that in there shook it up really well and then I just sprayed my hair I continued to spray it and then I would scrunch it uh, and I sprayed and scrunched probably a, excessively much more than I normally would I just wanted to make sure that this was all distributed and then I dry plopped for about 30 minutes then I just let it air dry and here is the finished result, as you saw earlier in the video. My hair is very defined. It, was, it felt very shiny. It was light. There was no residue. 
Um, this is either I continued to fluff and scrunch it, hoping to get a little bit more volume because it definitely felt flatter, um, especially compared to the aloe vera, my hair. Um, but it did offer some good definition. I was very surprised. I, I first didn't think that I would notice a difference at all because of how watery the texture was. But as you can see, it definitely added um, some nice shine. My hair, my hair felt soft and um, really didn't add volume whatsoever. Definitely compared to the aloe vera, I was very pleasantly surprised. I respritzed with that same water texture the next day and this is it, fully air dried that morning.